Bible's taken in terms of the book of Acts in chapter number 28. The book of Acts in chapter number 28. And join me in standing to your feet for the preaching, for the reading rather, of the word of God. I'm not going to make you stand for the whole message for sure. But if you'll stand for the reading of the word of God, I would greatly appreciate it. The Bible says, and when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they killed the fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered them on little sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the middle of his beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and fell no harm. How be it they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly? But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he wasn't God. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, I was also which had diseases in the eye, came and was healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. Yes, thank you for the wonderful privilege and opportunity we have to know that we have been blessed. I do pray, God, that you will bless now the word of God. That you'll serve it on the table of the hearts of these thy people, that they may eat and be filled and strengthen under every perfect work as it pertains to life and godliness. I pray that you'll take me as your vessel, cleanse me of sin, empty me of self, and fill me with your spirit. Nothing I say can help except you speak through me. So I pray that you bind Satan, put a hand of protection about this place, that in no way he hinder the work of the Holy Spirit. And when all is said and done, we'll give you all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. God bless my family while I'm gone. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Here in Acts chapter number 28, this chapter occurs right after Paul's perilous voyage toward Rome. We find while Paul, along with the other prisoners, are on this voyage, they're met by a terrible storm. As a matter of fact, at some point in the storm, everybody on there came to the point where they felt like they weren't going to make it. Hear the voice of this preacher.
And sure enough, just as Paul said, they all escaped, verse number 44, saved to land. But in chapter 28, Paul finds himself on the island of Melita, today known as the island of Malta. Paul gets busy, just like Paul did everywhere he went. He always got busy. By the way, I can't stand a lazy preacher, amen?
shake it off when you're stranded and alone. Listen to me. Malta wasn't on Paul's itinerary. He didn't go there because it was a missionary stop. He went there because that's when the boat broke down. And every once in a while, the boat breaks down. Yeah. <laughs> 
and you have mixed your faithfulness and you're apart from fun when you got to wake up and go see people that you don't enjoy being around and you got to work a job that's the only job you have when people ridicule you and they talk about you and they treat you with disdain when your whole family has forsaken you because they say your Christianity is some cult you call up in and when you get over to spend 30 minutes at the family reunion without feeling like you're compromising your spiritual position when you're ridiculed and talked about and run down and cast aside you got to be able to find a secret place to abide in the shadow yeah. of your mountain. you got to know somebody you can cast your care for that cares for you you got to find somehow in your faculty of intelligence to recall in your reminiscence God never failed you God never turned on you and somehow muster enough strength in your body to shake it off yeah. 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 shake it off when you strand it alone second shake it off when you spit that beauty Not only is he stuck somewhere he didn't plan to go, now he's bitten by some people. Can I say something today? You cannot live life without being hurt. You cannot live life without being hurt. Yet, there are people today who quit on God because they're hurt. There's somebody hanging in the balances of the valley of decision and whether you even want to fool with God anymore because somebody let you down. Come on, say amen. amen. Let me tell you something. We get hurt by problems. All kinds of problems. Financial problems. Physical problems. Family problems. Frustration problems. Fatigue problems. Let me tell you something. Problems show up just when we think we got one beat, ten more. Yes, sir. I tell you what, I remember 1990 when the doctor, when I got home from school, the fifth grade, and my dad took me out on the deck and said, Son, we'll talk to you. I said, Yes, sir. He said, There's a tumor in your mother's breast, and it's malignant. I said, Daddy, what is malignant? He said, That means cancers. As a fifth grade boy, I didn't know much about cancer, but what I knew wasn't good. I had witnessed for the next several months, my mom and dad take trips up to Chicago, Illinois area, and I watched a mom who was like superwoman to me, never got a cold, never got sick, never slowed down. I watched her go through over 360 hours of chemotherapy, and one day start combing her hair, and all of her hair come out. I watched my mom go down to a bald head. I watched her feel like she had to throw up from chemotherapy, and never yet be able to throw up. I watched her as she had to lay in the bed.
ever said I have no fear? You ever said I can't take it more? You ever said I don't think I can make it? You ever been stressed out? Hold on, folks, quit on God because of stress. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Aren't you glad God never quit on you?
serve God. I said tough skin if you're going to serve God. I watch head deacons turn on him. Staff members turn on him. Best friends lie on him. Scandalous women try to bring him down. I'm glad that somehow still found a way to mount that pulpit at 5811 Hoffman's Lane every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You know what he realized? Just because there are some people talking about me, if they please, I'll talk about them down on my knees. I still got to get a word from God. I'm so glad on the Saturday afternoons when he's been slammed.
Some say stupid things because they just don't know them. Come on, preacher. You've never come out in the pulpit and preach your heart out only to find someone waiting for you at the line to complain because there are no paper towels in the bathroom. <laughs> your spiritual guts out. And somebody's upset because if they had been designated for the sanctuary decor, they would have chosen a different shade of lilac. <laughs> Sounds small, but I'll tell you what, get you in the flesh real fast. You don't have time to be thinking about him or her all Sunday afternoon. You got to mount the pulpit in about four or five hours, and your folks don't need some sermon out of the briefcase, some oration you remembered, or some eloquent, manufactured, godly good for jargon. They need somebody that's got a word from God. You got to take that slander and that attack and that run down and that ridicule. Sometimes you'll be slandered intentionally. There will be there will be people that target you to run you down. Oh yeah. I said target you. Yeah. By the way, this doesn't just apply to preachers. Anybody. Yes, sir. Ever been lied on? Oh yeah. Whoever says sticks and stones will break my bones, the words will never hurt me. Don't know what they're talking about. The death of life and the power of the tongue. Amen, preacher. Yes, sir. The same little instrument from which come the blessings come curses. Yes. It hurts sometimes to hear what people say. It hurts when they attack your character. Uh -huh. How about when they attack your children? Boy. How about when somebody questions your motives and start saying you did it this way because of that way and you start tapping, you start walking up to people who think things about you that are the furthest things from the truth because somebody, somewhere, somehow ran you down. It's real easy to say, I'm not preaching anymore. I'm not singing anymore. I'm not tithing anymore. I'm not going anymore. I'm not serving anymore. But my friend, you can't. He 
said, Lord,
easy to see people and think they're fine. Just because they don't say so. Doesn't mean things are going on. That's right. Somebody came to serve us with the Bible. The girls here can't serve God if she hadn't gotten to who molested her. Oh, dear God. Oh, Every time I've said that in service, a girl's come up to me afterwards and said, How did you know? Somebody can't serve God because the last place they were, somebody heard you. Some pastors struggling men in the church. Because there are people that hate you. Some parents has a hard time teaching that class when they've got a kid who won't even come to church. Some wife is coming to church every Sunday while her, while her husband is out drinking. Some kid is serving God is the only one in the house that cares. Please don't quit. Please don't give up. Please don't give in. Look whatever you want. Slam in the face. And then God's power.